So the only thing that I'm going to ask, okay, I think I can be seeing, yeah, cool. The only thing that I'm really going to ask is that you do turn on your do not disturb. This is really for you. This will help you so much if you're not actively at work right now and you can. Um, so just click the do not disturb and let's have one hour without notifications. And then do turn on your mute button. That way, whatever's going on in your background um, is not stressful. So if you have never yoga with me live in person, I'm Kelly and I am so happy. I'm so happy that we're doing this. Um, but always, Move how you choose to move. This is your hour. This is your body. And really, no one else knows what's going on with you but you. So let the inner teacher totally trump whatever the outer teacher says today. And um, the only other housekeeping that I want to say is that this class is called Power Yoga, um, but power means something different every single day in your body. Power doesn't always mean, am I taking the most challenging shape I can take? Often power means, am I moving to where I can still breathe deeply? So that's what we're gonna play with as we're working with the idea of power, um, is am I breathing, you know, even when no one's around and I'm in my own house, can I hear my breath? And I think with that, we'll get started standing. So come up to stand, probably the middle of your mat so that you can take your legs nice and wide. For the first few cycles of breath, you'll just move your feet a little bit. Let your toes turn out. Your heels will turn a little bit in and you'll start to shift from side to side. So if your mat is a long way, then your feet might be off of your mat a little bit. That's how wide we'd like our stance. Palms can rest down on the tops of the thighs. And we're just shifting from side to side. Right here and right now, the breath starts to come in. We start to go, ooh, that's tight, or ooh, that feels nice. However it feels, go one more time in both directions, just side to side. And now as you take an inhale, let's come up to standing. So press through the legs, circle your arms out and up. And as you exhale, bring your hands right through the center channel of the body. Pause at the heart for a moment. Your eyes can be closed here. I will do my best to guide you with my voice so that you can stay in your own space. If you wanna do the whole thing with your eyes closed, that is all good with me. Take an exhale as your hands come down to by your sides. Take an inhale as they reach out and up, big circle with the arms. This time as the hands lower down, it's almost like this downward facing triangle. Start to bend the knees as you lower. As you lift, just circle the arms out and up, you'll come to standing up, yeah. Exhale is the lower, the bending, this downward triangle. Take an inhale to lift. Take an exhale to lower. We're already getting in. Keep moving here. We're already getting in to what makes this yoga, the breath, the slowing down. We're working with the energy lines of the body. As we inhale, we lift. And as we exhale, we lower. It's okay, whatever cycle that you're on. But we'll go for two more rounds. On the in breath, it's that reaching expansion. And on the out breath, it's down to the earth. Nice. Take an inhale, reach the arms up, straighten the left. Exhale, hands right through the midline. Pause at the heart, releasing the breath. That ha. Exhale, hands will come down by the sides. Turn to the front of the mat, maybe right foot turns forward. Just step your left foot forward and you'll be facing the front of the room. Breathe in with your feet about hip distance and reach the arms out and up. Breathe out as you fold, let the knees be bent, pretty deeply bent here. Inhale, let's lift halfway. You'll start to lengthen and lift your belly a little. Exhale, fold, let your head relax. Inhale to lift halfway, the gaze is right over the edge of your mat. 
Exhale, fold, hands just down the thighs. Breathe in to lift, you feel the length. Breathe out to fold, and when you get there this time, pause and hang. If you'd like to widen your stance a little, that's no problem here, just make some space. You can sway and reach for opposite elbows if you like ragdoll. Maybe swallow one or two times. Notice how the jaw is feeling. Inhale, let's release the hands down. Lift up halfway. Hands can always support the shins. Shimmy the feet under the hips if they're not. Take an exhale, bring your hands all the way down to the mat. Step one foot back and then the other. This is your first high plank pose. Knees down is no problem here, but feel the belly start to ignite. Take an exhale. Let's sit the hips back, but bend the knees a lot. So as you gaze forward, this is really like a bear pose. You're hovering the knees just one inch. Already it's pretty fiery. Take an inhale, lift up onto the tippy toes. You're straightening your legs. Exhale, re-bend the knees. It's that bear pose, hovering here. Inhale, lift up on the tippy toes. Exhale, re-bend. If you're like me, the legs are already shaking. Inhale, lift. Exhale, into that bear pose. Inhale, lift up on the tippy toes. Exhale, walk the feet towards the middle of the mat. Walk the hands back to meet the feet. Inhale to lift halfway. Exhale, fold, relax your neck. Inhale, lift halfway. Bring your big toes together. There's a little sliver of space between the heels. Sit the seat down low. Bend the knees a lot. Start to sweep the arms up. This is your first Utkatasana pose. This is that fierce pose. We try to tuck the tailbone just a little bit. That's not always easy, but pull the belly in. I promise I'll sit a little lower if you will, and I won't even know if you're cheating. Exhale. Hands will come all the way down to the mat. Inhale to lift halfway. Hands can support on the shin. Exhale as you bend your knees, you'll slide your hands to the front. You'll step your feet to the back. High plank pose. The power is in the breath. Exhale, downward facing dog. Gaze to your own thighs. If you still need to move here, yes, pedal the feet. Yes, shake the head. Yes, make any motion that the body's like, oh, thank you. Inhale, bring your big toes together. This is just for stability when we leg lift. We'll go left side to start. So reach your left foot straight up and back behind your toes. Stay pointed down. Exhale, step your left foot forward and through the hands. Take an inhale, start to lift a little. There's this coiling action. So lift just a little in your lunge. And as you exhale, chest comes forward. Fingertips lift, just hovering off the mat. Inhale, sweep the arms all the way up. The gaze will follow your hands. Release the distraction when you sit a little deeper. Yes, I'll do it with you. Exhale, two hands will lower down. Your left foot will step back. You're in high plank. Take a pause. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let your feet be hip distance. Let your jaw soften. Can you close your eyes? Can you feel grateful that you did this for yourself? You're like, whew, I still made it to yoga. That's something to feel good about. Big toes come together. It's right leg rising up and back. Keep your toes pointed down. Exhale, step your foot all the way through. See if you can do it softly. Inhale, it's that slight coiling action. So you lift up a little bit. And exhale, you'll sit deeper. You'll feel this length in the left leg. Breathe in to come up off of the fingertips. You'll feel the power in the front. Reach the arms up. The gaze will follow the hands. Soften the shoulders. Or if you're still playing with inner gaze, close the eyes. It will make you feel a little wobbly, so don't worry. Exhale, two hands will lower down. Right foot will step back, high plank pose. You choose knees down or not. I'm gonna go a little bit lunar this first cycle. So if you're going chaturanga, go for it. 
If you're with me, our chest and chin will lower down as our booty stays lifted. You'll slither forward onto the belly and lift the hands up just a little. Exhale, press into the hands and knees. Find downward facing dog. Three breath cycles here. What can I feel good about? What can I release? Big toes come together. This is just for the support. Inhale, it's left leg up and back, straight up and back. Exhale, left foot steps forward between the hands. Inhale, bump up off of the fingertips. This is to engage that belly. Inhale, sweep the arms up. The gaze will lift. We're adding on here. Spin your right heel flat. Open the arms like a T. Your left foot will shimmy a little more to the middle of the mat. This is warrior two. You're gazing over that front middle finger or the eyes are closed. The internal gaze. Noticing just how it feels. Exhale, you bring two hands down to the mat. Turn onto your back toes. Lower your back right knee down. Keep your back right toes curled just for this first cycle. Take an inhale, sweep the arms up. This is low lunge. Exhale, open the arms like a cactus if it feels good. Feeling the heart lift. Breathe in to reach your arms up. Breathe out to release two hands down. You lift up on this back right knee, so you're in that same runner's lunge. Hands plant, step or slide your left foot back, plank pose. Either knees, chest and chin lower down, or vinyasa your way. So I'm going for that baby cobra. I'm going to press through my knees for down dog, but you do what you need. Big toes come together. It's the right foot. Take an inhale, right foot up and back. Take an exhale, step your foot forward between the hands. In breath off of the fingertips, feel the leg. Inhale, reach your arms up. Gaze is lifted, shoulders are soft. Take an exhale to open to your warrior two. Shimmy your right foot a little to the middle of the mat. Internal gaze is not about how it looks, it's about how it feels. I'll sit a little lower if you will. Ooh, yes, where we can think of nothing else. Exhale, two hands will come down to the mat. You'll turn onto those left toes, left knee lowers. As you inhale, keep your toes tucked actually. As you inhale, reach the arms up. As you exhale, open the elbows. Nice big cactus shape, heart forward. Inhale, lift your hands. Exhale, release your hands. Tuck your back left toes. You'll plant your hands down. You'll slide your right foot back. So you choose if you're going for that chaturanga, you may start to just bend the elbows halfway with the knees lifted. Inhale, if you're going upward facing, the thighs will stay lifted. Downward facing becomes this resting place now. <laughs> Eventually it feels like rest. Gaze to your thighs for two full breaths. If you are alone and you can work with your audible exhales, take a big breath in through the nose and exhale that ha ah sound. I'll do it one more time so you can get loud. Inhale. Ah. Big toes come together. Left leg rises up and back. We know the pathway that we're going. Left foot steps forward and through the hand, off of the fingertips. Inhale to reach up. This is your crescent shape. Exhale to open up to warrior two. Your back heel spins flat, your left foot to the middle. Open the eyes like a T. You're gazing right over that front middle finger. Exhale, bring both hands down to the mat. Turn onto your right toes. Let your right knee lower down. You can keep the toe tucked or untuck the cycle, your choice. Take an inhale to sweep your arms up. Exhale, open for the cactus shape. We'll add on here, breathe in to reach your arms up. Exhale, as your hands lower down, you'll start to straighten in your left leg. 
So bend the knee on a breath in, straighten the knee on a breath out. This will take some time here to open the back side of the leg. Last breath in, exhale, you're in a half split, a half Hanuman. You can send your left foot a little more forward if that works. You can fold a little more towards your knee if that works. The shape is challenging for all of us, but I love it because it's really about devotion, about taking a single leap, right? Something really grand. Exhale, re-bend your knee, curl the back toes under and lift your back knee. Bring your hands down, slide this left foot back. If you are really in the power, you could keep your back left leg lifted and as you lower, this is Chaturanga halfway, keep that foot raised. Inhale, this is upward facing dog, thighs stay lifted. Exhale, this is downward facing dog, jaw softens. Big toes come together. It's this left, excuse me, right leg flying up and back really slow. Right foot forward between the hands, off of the fingertips on a breath in. Reach the arms up, you'll feel the gaze, you'll feel the belly lift. Exhale, open to a warrior two. Shimmy your front foot, find the stability in the roots, the gaze over the middle finger. The internal gaze is asking the question, oh, how does this feel? Exhale, hands will come down to the mat. You're on the back left toes, left knee lowers. You can uncurl the toes or not. This is your choice. Now we're a little more open. Sweep the arms up. Exhale, open that nice big heart forward. Inhale, reach. Exhale, release your hands down to the mat and start to straighten in your right leg. Rebend in your right knee. Straighten in your right knee. You'll do this at least twice more. Feel the hip joint. Feel the knee joint. For some of us, this Feels a lot about the ankle. Just notice, ooh, what's tight? What's loose? How am I feeling? Take an inhale to lift a little. You can push your heel a little more forward if it works. You can fold a little more towards that front knee if it works. This is just options. Inhale, think of that devotion, that devotion to the body that we're doing right now. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, re-bend your right knee. Plant your hands on the mat. Tuck your left toes, lift your knee. Right foot slides up and back. If you kept the left foot lifted, then keep this one lifted. Lower just halfway, hover, hover. Inhale, both feet come onto the ground as we find Urdhva Mukha, that's upward facing. Exhale is Adho Mukha, that's our downward facing. This place is an amazing place to rest if you're feeling really fiery, if you're with me and you're already sweating a little bit. Bring the knees down. Find child's pose with the forehead down. Five full breaths. If you're in child's pose, you can roll the forehead from side to side. If you're in downward dog, notice if you're lifting on the thighs a little more. Notice, can the jaw and neck soften? Have two breaths of quiet time. Inhale, gaze forward towards your thumbs. So friends in down dog, you'll shift into a plank. Friends that are in child's pose, we'll lift our hips. We'll all bring the forearms down. So if you're in plank and not using the knees, you get an extra five points here. And we'll press through one leg, press through the other. We're all in this forearm plank. Gaze right between your thumbs. You can notice, are my arms like a number 11? Are my shoulders really on? If you feel like you're dying here, then don't do it. Just bring the knees down, it's no problem. But if you're pressing through the shoulders, pressing through the hands, you'll also press through the leg. You think leg tier. Take an exhale, let your hips lower down as you uncurl your toes. You'll feel this nice, much easier back bending now. Take an exhale, release your forehead down onto the mat. Sweep your hands back behind you. Your palms will be lifted now. 
Let your feet be about mat's distance apart. I know you might not be able to see, but feet be about, about mat's distance apart. Take an inhalation and bind your hands behind your back if that's working for you. Take an exhalation and let all the old stale air out. Just a ha. Next breath in, lift your chest. Pull your hands back, like pulling back towards your back wall. Gaze right over the edge of your mat. It's forward, it's slightly down. And on this cycle, press the toe tips into the mat. This will help lift the chest a little bit more. This is our energy boots for the day. This is our espresso shot, if you haven't had it yet. Take an exhale, release the hand. Bring your left ear to the mat. Wiggle your hips from side to side. You can bend your knees and wiggle. Ah, sometimes that feels nice. Release your feet onto the mat. Let me not talk away from you. Release your feet onto the mat. Take an inhale, turn your forehead back to center. You'll make that exact same shape if you'd like, or this time you'll zip up the legs. You'll reach the hands behind you. Take an exhale, let all the old stale air out while your forehead's still lowered on the mat. Take an inhale, lift your chest, lift your arms, and now lift the legs if you're adding on. So if you're adding on, the two legs are zipped up as one and you're pressing through the legs. If you have legs down and they're a little bit wider, this is just to support your low back. And I promise you, I'll stay in this with you for another breath as you lift your chest. I know this is not easy, but it is energetically lifting. It will boost us. Exhale, bring the opposite ear to the mat, right ear down, close your eyes, release. Shimmy the hips. Inhale, turn your head forward. Exhale, bring your hands under the shoulders. Inhale, press into the hands and knees. Exhale for child's pose and use your hands if you'd like to give a little touching, a little pounding, tapping to the low back. So releasing the low back in your child's pose for another full breath. Walk your hands forward, start to lift your head and gaze between the hands. As you exhale, you'll lift the hips high up and back as you curl your toes under. Downward facing dog should feel pretty nice right about now. Bring the big toes together. Notice where the breath is. There's an inhale as the left leg rises up and back. There's an exhale as the foot steps forward through the hands. Come up off of the fingertips. I know that's not easy. The end breath is the riser. It drives the arms up as the chest lifts. Take an exhale to open into a warrior two. You're shimmying that front left foot. You're sitting low in that front knee. We'll add on just a little here. As you straighten your left leg, reach really far forward with your left arm. And left hand will come down as your right arm rises. So notice the left hand doesn't have to touch anything. It is more important that this top part of your waist, your side, is really open rather than dumping or all hunched up. So notice, are all energetic lines of the body straight or mostly straight? Exhale, look down to your left knee or the left big toe. Bend your left knee. Warrior two, right here. The gaze is right over your middle finger. Exhale, two hands lower down. You're turning onto those right toes. Right knee lowers. You can uncurl the right toes. Take an inhale, sweep your arms up. Exhale, open for the cactus shape, heart forward. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, release two hands down, straightening in that front left leg. Hands under the shoulders will actually be a little bit easier. You can be on fingertips if you're not as open, if you're like me, or if you have blocks, that will even help you there. Take an exhale, fold your head just as much as you can. Head towards the knee. Inhale, lift half. Exhale, re-bend your front knee. We'll add one more shape here. Hands come down to frame the foot. Curl through the back toes, right toes. Press this right hand right under the shoulder. 
And on an inhale, reach your left arm up and open. So you're twisting now pretty gently, but lift it in the back leg. Exhale as your left hand comes down. Next breath out, left foot slides back. So keep it lifted if you're playing with that one foot. You can go knees, chest, and chin, or we're taking the ekapada. That just means one foot. Inhale for upward facing, rolling over the toes. Exhale for downward facing. Ah, that is our flow. That is our vinyasa. Anything with beginning, middle, and end is a vinyasa. Anything that has a full cycle. Big toes come together. Right leg up and back. Reach your right leg up and back. Exhale, right foot steps forward between the hands. Off of the fingertips. Inhale to reach the arms up. Soften in the shoulders. Soften in that front leg a little bit. Exhale, open to warrior two. Always that shimmying of the front foot will help you feel supported. Gaze right over that middle finger or eyes closed. Adding on here, start to straighten in your front leg. Start to reach really far forward. It's this hinge of the hips as that top arm reaches indefinitely, right? It's reaching to the ceiling, but really the energy is going beyond. Don't worry if the hand's touching the mat or not on the bottom, it's no problem. Exhale, gaze down to the right big toe. Rebend your right hand, it's warrior two. Beautiful, take an exhale as your hands lower down to the mat. That knee will lower down. Uncurl your toes if you have the space. Inhale as you sweep your arms up. Exhale, open, we're shining here. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Exhale, hands will come down to the mat as you straighten in your right leg. So you can move the heel a little bit. Don't feel stuck here, it's okay to wiggle around so you can feel the back bind. One more full breath in. One more full breath out. Inhale, let's lift our chest. Let's rebend the front knee. Hands will frame the foot here. Curl your back left toes, lift your knee. Right foot will slide back. Keep it lifted if you're playing with hovering. You'll bend the elbows halfway. Inhale, it's the ordva. That just means upward. Exhale, it's the adho, that means downward. Two breaths free from distraction. It's okay that the outside world is happening, it always does. We're just breathing here. Pressing into the L shape of the index finger and thumbs will help take some weight or pressure off the joints. Bring your big toes together. It will be right leg this time. So right leg rises up and back. Exhale, step your right foot forward between the hands and then crawl around to the long side of your mat so that you're facing me. Turn your right toes with you. So now take a peek. You'll lift up halfway and both big toes will be pigeon toed a little bit, turn towards each other. As you exhale, start to fold and release your neck. The hands will probably be under the shoulders. For some of us who are very flexy, the elbows will bend a lot. The forehead will, or the crown of the head will press onto the mat. If you're with me and you're not there yet, we're just letting gravity do its thing. If you feel wobbly here, then keep your eyes open. Gaze to the back wall behind you. One more big full breath here. Take an inhale, start to lift halfway. Hands will come right under the shoulders if they're not. Take an exhale, hands to hips, bend your knees just a little bit, a little micro bend, and now come up to standing on a breath in. Reach the arms out and up. It's like that star pose. Yeah, we did at the beginning. Turn your heels in, toes out. There's just a little shimmying that'll happen. And as you exhale, bend the knees a lot. Hands will come down to the thighs. So you might widen or you might shorten your stance however your hips are feeling. And as you exhale, hands will come down closer to the knees and you'll dip your left shoulder in. So let the elbows bend on that right side. Dip your left shoulder in, gaze upwards a little bit to the corner. Inhale, lift. 
and exhale, opposite side, dipping your shoulder in. This twisting should feel good. Breathe in to lift, breathe out to lower. So if it doesn't feel good, you can change that shape. Breathe in to lift, breathe out to twist. Last time we're lifting, left shoulder is dipping in. We're lifting, right shoulder is dipping in. This time as we lift, let's come up to stand. So lift and reach the arms out and up, big star pose. Exhale as you bend the knees, this time bend the elbows. The hands will flatten like you're holding a tray, like a serving tray, and you're now fully in this goddess squatting. This is a Kali shape. She's a pretty fierce goddess. So we can feel that fire here. I know I'm doing it with you. I promise it gets a little fiery. But notice, do you feel some power here in the legs? The roots are really rising. So lift the left heel if you want a little bit more. Lift the right heel if you want a little bit more. You don't have to do this. This is your choice for how much fire you want. Take an inhale, bring the heels down, reach the arms up. It's that ha ah, of star pose. Bring the hands down through the center channel. Pause at your heart. Shimmy your feet or step your feet a little bit closer. They'll probably be a little wider than hip distance. Turn the toes out. Take an exhale and bend the knees to sit down low into this malasana, this lower yogi squatting will actually feel easier now that we've done some more challenging shapes and this is not an easy one so notice what your brain says about ease right it's relative to what else we're doing what else is going on in the world let your eyes closed if you don't feel wobbly just for one more breath i'll stay in it with you Inhale, flicker the eyes open if they're closed. Exhale, hands down, hips lift. Find that release of the neck and head. Lift up halfway, turn the toes in, shimmy the feet under the hips. Take an exhale, fold here, hands just around the ankles. Take an inhale to lift halfway. Bend your knees a lot. We're gonna go for one deeper folding. So it'll be peace fingers and thumb around your big toes. The thumb is just kind of the cap. I have to bend my knees a lot to get here, but once you get that binding, that hooking of the hands and toes, inhale to lift halfway. It's okay if knees are still bent. And then exhale, fold. You can bend the elbows a little or a lot and slowly you'll start to straighten the legs. So belly will stay on the thighs, no problem if knees are bent the entire time. Two full breaths. Inhale, lift halfway, unwind that bind, shake out the hands. Exhale, hands down, just fold, let your forehead sunk. Inhale, let's reach and rise up to standing. So come all the way up to standing. Hands right down through the center line. Pause at the heart. Press through your right leg. You may want to look at something not moving, something beyond your, your screen that's not wiggling around. But press through the right foot. Lift the left knee into the air and you'll flex through the left toe. Hands can remain at the heart. It might be a little easier if hands come onto hips. Or if you want to add on to this shape, the left hand will come down to the left knee. Pull your shoulders back just a little bit. So you can stay here or start to open your left knee out to the left. You can stay or open your right arm out to the right. You could stay here or gaze over the right shoulder. This is gonna make you pretty wobbly. So if you're falling all over the place, don't worry about it. You can get back in it. As you exhale, bring your left hand down to the ankle and bring your left foot right into the right thigh, hands back at the heart. This is your tree pose. Adjust that shape if you need. The foot could shimmy down a little lower, just not on the knee joint. The foot could shimmy way down if you're feeling really wobbly, and that'll give you a little kickstand of this left foot. Start to grow the branches if you're going there. 
If you need even more power, start to lift up on the right toes. So this will make you wobbly, or it'll make me wobbly anyways. Play for another full breath. This is your tree, your way. This is your tree, your way at your house. So fall all around if you need to. Exhale, hands through the center line. Rebend your left knee, turn it forward. Pause here for a moment, I know, right leg's on fire. And then press through that left foot, straightening the leg if you can. Exhale, foot down, hands to hips. Whew, give a little sway from side to side. The figure eight motion, that infinity kind of motion with the hips usually feels really good. The circles are nice to the hip joints. And when you feel completed, you can catch your breath. You'll release the sway, bring your feet under the hips. Hands will come to the heart and you'll lift your right knee. So start to press into the left leg from here. Start to reach your right hand down to your right knee from here. Hand could go to the hip on the other side if that's a little easier. Open your right knee to the right. You can use the grip of the hand to help you. Open your opposite arm. Open the left arm to the left. Don't worry about if you're wobbly. The power is not really in the shape. The power is in the breath. You're turning your head opposite your knee if you want to challenge a lot. This will make me super wobbly. Exhale, bring your right hand down to the ankle. Bring your foot to the thigh, hands to the heart. No worries if you need to wobble around or if you're falling around to find your tree pose. If you grew your branches, then grow your branches. If you sway, then maybe sway. If you lift it up on the tippy toes, you might try this on the side. Or not, power to your roots, whatever you love. Exhale, hands in through the midline. Turn your right knee forward, and if you fall, no problem, but right knee comes forward. Now straighten through the right leg, if you can. So pressing through the foot a lot. Exhale, Ooh, bring your foot down, hands to hips. Again, it's just a little sway from side to side. You can close your eyes here. The inner gaze, the inner teacher awakens as we listen. Inhale to flicker the eyes open. Exhale, hands will come down. You'll turn forward and just walk to the top of your mat so you have space. Reach your arms out and up. You're facing the front of your mat. Your feet are underneath the hips. Exhale, take a nice big deep fold here. Inhale, lift halfway, hands to shin. Exhale, hands will come down to the mat. You'll step one foot back and then the other. This is high plank. This is your choice if you're taking that vinyasa. So if you'd like to bend the elbows, that chaturanga for a little more, go for it. Take an inhale for upward facing. If you're doing the baby cobra, that's no problem here. It equally is energizing. Downward facing as we roll over the toes. Bring your big toes together. Take an inhale as your left leg rises up and back. Take an exhale as you bend your knee and open your left hip. See if you can watch the weight in the left shoulder. I know it wants to lift up. See if you can pull it back under. One time as you come onto your right tippy toes, the left knee will go in towards the nose. It will sweep out and around. You can do it actually. Go one more time so you can feel it. In, out, around and then step your foot all the way through. So it's just where we were before. Take an inhale to sweep the arms up. You're in this high lunge. Take an exhale to open into your warrior two. Shimmy your front foot to the middle. You're moving with the breath. As you straighten your front left leg, reach your arm forward. It's that kind of tick-tocking of that bottom arm down and top arm high. The gaze can lift or gaze down to the big toe. This is your choice. Inhale, we'll all look at the left big toe. We'll re-bend the left knee. Find warrior two. Exhale, two hands lower down. Stay high on the back toes. Ah, I'm realizing I missed a twist. So let's bring this right hand down underneath the shoulder. Lift your left arm open. Ah, twisting. 
And I promise I'll get it for you on the other side. Take an exhale, left hand comes down. Right knee lowers, uncurl your toes if you have the space. Reach your arms up. Exhale, open that cactus shape. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Exhale, release your hands down, straightening in this front left leg. Lift your chest a little, exaggerated heartbeat. Exhale, lower, fold. You can let the gaze be towards the knee. It doesn't have to touch the knee. It's just in that direction. Inhale to lift halfway. Exhale, re-bend your knee. Hands plant, curl the back toes under. You'll slide this left foot back and lower it to the ground. Unless you're really feeling fiery and you want to keep it lifted, if you're with me, let's bring knees down. Let's walk the hands forward. So if you're doing a vinyasa, of course you can stay in that power. But if you're going with me, then we're going into this heart melting pose where the forehead comes down. Lovingly, we typically call this puppy pose. So yeah, where the, where the booty's right over the knees, the hips are right over the knees stacking, and we're bumped up onto fingertips. If you have the space, this will actually feel really nice underneath the armpit. Inhale, lift your head. Exhale, left arm comes down, forearm down. Right forearm down, you're in this number 11 with the fingers. Press through your left foot, press through your right foot. You found second set of your forearm plank. So you can bring knees down. It doesn't matter what layer that you choose. The power is in the breath. Am I breathing? Can I release my tongue from the roof of my mouth? And take an exhale, lower your hips down. Ah, let your collarbones broaden as you uncurl the toes. Exhale, your forehead will lower to the mat. You will either go for locust pose, one of the shapes that we did the last time we were on our bellies, or if you would like to add on, then your forehead will come down, you'll bend your knees, and you'll reach the hands back for the outer ankles. So reach for the outer, this is for your shoulder rotation. Relax your forehead and just ah, sigh out of the mouth. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, kick as you lift. So you're pressing the feet into the hands, you're lifting the chest as much as you can. The knees, the thighs wanna be lifted here. I know it's not easy. Take one more big full breath, and if you're doing locust pose, that's just as energizing. Exhale, release the feet, release the hands under your forehead and just let the forehead relax. Forehead resting on the hands like a pillow. Bend the knees if you choose, the windshield wipering of the feet from side to side. Release your feet down. Bring your hands under the shoulders. Press yourself into a child's pose. Don't get too cozy here. Press yourself into a child's pose and go for one more of that light tapping or pounding to the low back. Soften your forehead so don't have any tension in the neck. You know, it's challenging when we're constantly watching. But try to soften the forehead and then give that light pressing or tapping to the low back. Hands will come down, gaze forward as you lift your head, slide your hands forward. The out breath lets you tuck your toes under and find downward facing dog. Feel some stability here. Bring the big toes together. Bring your right leg up and back. Bend your right knee, open your right hip. See if you can try to keep some weight in your right shoulder. Exhale, you're on left toes. Your right knee comes in towards the nose. It sweeps out and around. We go in towards the nose, out and around. Exhale, the foot will step all the way through between the hands. We're high on the fingertips. Inhale to reach the arms up. You're finding that anjaneya, that crescent lunge. 
Exhale to open into your warrior two. Shimmy your front foot a little. You'd like that 90 degree of knee over ankle. Straighten in your front right leg. Reach your right arm forward as right arm lowers, your left arm rises. And see if you can almost lean back like there's a wall behind you. You'll feel it in between each individual rib. Gazing upwards. Exhale, we'll gaze down to the right big toe. Rebend the right knee and find warrior two. Sit low, I'll stay with you. Exhale, hands will come down. You're on the left toes, left hand plants under the shoulder. So as you exhale, you're twisting open with this right arm. And pause here. Keep breathing. But see if you can lean back a little bit more in that deeper twist. Exhale, bring your right hand down. We'll twist one more time just to make sure we get that depth. So exhale, you're opening right arm. Just opening. Next breath out. Hand lowers down. Back knee lowers down. Uncurl the back toes. Take an inhale to sweep your arms up. Exhale, open the heart. This is that cactus shape. Inhale, reach the arms upwards. Exhale, release two hands down to the mat. Shift into that straight right leg. You might have to shimmy a little. Again, we make space as we get warm. So exhale and fold just as much as feels good to the neck. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, re-bend your front knee. We'll bring the hands down to the mat. Curl your back toes. Your right foot will slide behind you and press onto the floor. So if you're feeling the fire, if you need one push-up, if you need 17 push-ups, we will probably not be doing that with you, but go for it. Take an exhale. Downward facing dog is where we'll meet. So your vinyasas, right? Your avenues. This is where the inner teacher says, hey, this is what I like. And the mind says, okay, <laughs> knees lower down. Come back to sitting on the shins. Ah, hands rest on the thighs. You can close your eyes if that works for you so that you can breathe a little deeper. Feeling grateful for something. All right, open the eyes here. Roll off of one hip so that you can come down to your seat. The legs will swing around in front. You can use your hands, use the weight, put some weight in your hands so that you can windshield wiper the knees from side to side. Just one way and then the other. Again, the hips will really love. Sorry guys, I wanna make sure that we have a lot of time. Okay, we have so much time. All right, so knees from side to side. And then when you're ready, you'll bring the feet closer in towards the body and you'll start to bring the hands, the two peace fingers, just right behind the thighs. So once you get there, lift up onto the tippy toes. So I am pretty challenged, even though my tiptoes are still on the ground, my belly is already shaking. You can use the hands as you slowly start to lift the legs. You'll press through the feet. This will help you. And again, the fingers will lift the chest a little bit. It's okay if you're wobbly, it's no problem. This is Navasana, this is boat pose. So if you're like, oh no, this is going so well, then reach the arms forward. Knees bent, arms reaching forward. Or if you're feeling a lot of fire, you could straighten the legs. Again, we won't know if you're cheating, so you can re-bend the knees, it's no problem. Just keep your chest lifted, keep your arms reaching. We'll go down through one version of low boat. So you'll press through the feet, press through the arms, keep the shoulder blades lifted. I know this isn't easy. Inhale, lift back up to Navasana. I do it with you, I promise, I promise. Exhale, release your feet down. Ooh, let the head relax. This is my arch nemesis <laughs> shake. Bring the hands behind you. Release the legs from side to side. Let's go for one more Navasana. 
Bring the hands up. We won't even think about it. Hands up behind the thighs. Take an inhale to lift your chest. Lift the legs. Press through the feet. Reach the arms forward. I promise we can do this for two breaths. Big inhale. Big exhale. If you're breathing quickly, you'll get some extra credit. You'll get a lot of breaths in here. Big inhale. Exhale, feet down, relax your head. Ah, you can just cross the hands so that you can rest. Good. It's a lot of power. <laughs> Exhale as the hands come behind you. Again, knees from side to side. When you feel pretty good here, then bring the soles of your feet together. The big toes, you don't have to switch shapes. The big toes will probably peel away from each other. Hands will come around the ankles. Butterfly the legs a little bit, just bouncing. The closer your feet are towards you, the more challenging that is gonna be. So somewhere in the middle, if they're really far away, that's also gonna be a little more challenging. A little more bouncing. Take an inhale, lift your chest. Your heart is forward. You're opening the collarbones. And as you exhale, start to fold elbows, if you can. We'll press a little more into the thighs. And this will actually make it easier to open the hips. So gaze past your feet just slightly, if you can. This will keep us from too much rounding in the back. We'd like our spine to make some links. The work is in the breath. And we slow it way down. The work is in the breathing. Exhale, start to fold. Now hands clasp whatever they clasp. Maybe they reach the feet. Maybe they just reach for the calves or even behind the knees. Anywhere that you can reach and get a little extra stretching in the low back, that feels good. If you just noticed, oh, this doesn't feel good, then back out a little bit. Let the shoulders relax a little bit. We're still folded here for one more breath in and out. All right, inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, bend the knees. You can scoot your booty a little closer to the feet so you have space behind you or however you need to shimmy around your room. You can walk your, or actually, Let's just roll down. We've done a lot of work. Let's bring the hands behind the thighs. Let's roll down onto our backs. Oh, and hug the knees into the chest. You can start to rock from side to side. That might feel really nice. For some of us, happy baby just feels so natural. You, can, you already start reaching for it, reaching for the outer edges of the feet or reaching for the ankles. And send your knees away from you as you send Ah, the knees towards the floor. So you're kind of pulling on the hips a little bit and you can rock, you can roll. Yeah, you can go one foot and then the other. Just move around however you choose. You could bring the hands just to the shins or knees as you make some circles. So as we're coming down, keep moving here as you decide what you'd like to do next. So as we're coming down to our finishing shapes, many of you already know what you love. 
I really want to invite you to do what you love. If you want to lift your legs into the air, this waterfall, or I like to call poor man's legs up the wall, <laughs> then you can lift the legs in the air. You don't even need a wall. You can kind of jiggle the feet, jiggle the hands, and just stay here. If you love shoulder stand, this is something that's in your practice. You do this all the time. Or headstand, even, if this is something you do all the time. You're on your own cycle. You can go for it. If you're with me, I'm going to offer us one round of bridge and one round of upward facing bow. So do your own thing, or we'll all bring our feet down with a bend in the knees. Check out, can I graze or kind of kiss the heel with my middle finger? This will let me know I'm in about the right spot. Take an inhale if you're taking that bridge shape and lift your hips. You want to keep the gaze towards the ceiling to support your neck. And if you have even more space, snuggle one shoulder and then the other underneath. You can clasp a bind of the hands. Again, the gaze is towards the ceiling. Lift the hips just a little higher. It's as though we have a book or a block between the thighs. The thighs are still on. One more big full breath. Again, back bends, energetic lifting. This is good boosting. This is good, like caffeinated beverage here. Exhale, unwind the hands, release the hips. You'll either stay with that bridge pose. You'll do the exact same thing we just did. Or if you're going for upward facing bow, if this isn't something you usually do, then you can do what I'm doing and just come onto your head. So the hands will come up by the ears. You'll have a bend in the elbows here. You might have to move your hair out of the way. Take an exhale, let all the old stale air out. It's that ha. And as you inhale, press into the feet, press into the hands, and just come onto the head. So if you do this all the time, yes, of course, you can lift way up. But if you don't do this all the time, this is already pretty challenging. So notice how the low back feels. Notice is there weight in your hands or is most of it on the crown of your head? Take an exhale, tuck your chin lower down. Ooh, and take an exhale, hug the knees into the chest. You have another few cycles of breath to move the legs around, to move the hips around. If you were doing something other than back bending, you might start to join us now. Let's make one tight squeeze and lift up into a little ball. Some of you might even be able to reach your opposite elbows, lift your head, lift your neck. Think of forehead to the knee, even if it doesn't touch. And as you exhale, it's this big ha, sigh. Let the arms come out long, let the feet come out wide, toes will just flop out to the sides. Chin tucks ever so slightly. This is Shavasana, this is what you did that for. I know it's challenging to be here when it's very quiet or opposite when it's very noisy. But you deserve at least this next 30 seconds of quiet all to yourself. Half a minute. All right, start to wake yourself up. Start to reach your arms forward, your legs back. Start to roll onto your favorite side. If you have time here, you can stay as long as you need. This is an amazing time to grab a little bit of meditation after just that simple sitting. 
But if you're like, whew, no, I still have things to do, then you'll start to slowly press yourself back up to a comfortable seat. When you arrive, the chin will tuck ever so slightly. This just keeps the back of the neck really long. And if you're alone, and or if you're not alone, and you can, and you'd like to ohm, this will join our time together, even though we can't really hear each other. We know our ohms are happening. And if you don't need to ohm, no problem, just breathe. But we'll take a cleansing breath first. Big inhale through the nose. Big sigh through the mouth. Huh. Receive your breath for ohm. Ah. Hands to the third eye, the vision center. I bow to you and to this time together. I am overjoyed right now. So I know while we're stuck in quarantine, this is pretty amazing that we're doing this. So thank you. Thank you, yogis. And namaste.